Hey there, this is Mark. In this video, we're going to take a look at turbulent mats. We're going to use a turbulent noise module. I'll just type that into my node library, and I'm going to drag in the turbulent noise into my node view. Now, turbulent noise, when we look at it in the display mode, will look like nothing in OpenGL and nothing in the render view. The reason for that is that we need to set a few settings to turbulent noise in order to see anything happen. And the first one is your frequency. So I can bump this up from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3. And you can start to see how we are scaling back our view to allow more turbulent noise to happen. Next we can change what we see up here. We have various types of noises and various types of fractal types. So I'm going to choose something like Turbulent Twist or Terrain, and this looks pretty good. And then I'll add some complexity to it, so I'll add a 2 or a 3 to create a little bit more of a contrasty shape. Now if I want to bump the contrast to make the darks and the lights stick out more, I'll add a contrast node. Let's see the uh, layer properties for the contrast node. And I'm going to bump the dark pixels to be darker by bumping that up to two. So now I have some ranges of lights and darks. Uh, and that's what we're going to use to create some light in our sky. If I look back at the sky, I have a sky with some texture back here and several stars. And what I want to do is use this turbulent noise layer to glow these stars more when it hits the white patches in the turbulence. To explain this, I'm going to first add a glow module to these stars. And I'm going to use a cutter to isolate them. So I'm literally adding the stars back onto themselves first, and we'll take a look and see what that does. If I just preview this, and I uncheck it, you see there's a slight modification here. First thing I want to do is make sure that they are using the source color, which is fairly white, and that'll make them glow a little bit brighter. And then I want to give them a bit of blur on the radius so that they expand a little bit more, so it'll be a little bit more fuzzy. But in order to see the glow a little bit more, I'm also going to expand the mat of the stars so that they take a little bit more room. Simply type in matte and we'll bring up the matte options and we'll use this matte resize and we'll plop that right here. In the matte resize properties, I'm going to make this radius a 1. And instantly you see that everything starts to glow quite a bit. Essentially what we're do doing is we're taking all these little dotted stars and we're saying take one pixel more room on each side of yourself. Then we're making that glow, which makes it even brighter. So this is before and after. So I'm going to plug this right into a cutter and plug that back over top. But what I want to do is I want to use this turbulent noise layer to dictate where this extra glowing happens. So let's take a look at that turbulence noise again. Everywhere where it's white, we want it to show, and where it's black, we don't want it to show. In a previous tutorial, I explained how you can use a grayscale module to get that result used as a mat. So let's type in gray, and we'll bring in the grayscale module. And in the properties, I'll make sure to check on matte output, and that's what's going to make the dark pixels transparent and the white pixels opaque. We'll look at our scene again. And I don't want to cut away, I want to dictate where the shape is, so I want to invert that cutter. And that will say wherever the white is, show these stars wherever the dark is, do not. And wiring that in, you can see that the result is very different. I have some stars that are showing bright, but most of them are not. And if I disconnect, we can see the difference between on and off. So that is now dictating that some spots will show bright and some won't. What I now want to do is animate this value so that it changes over time. I'll take a look at that display again. Right now, if we go down to our timeline, 
we can see that the turbulence noise stays the same no matter which frame we're on. So what we want to do is animate the evolution of this turbulent noise so that it changes over time. I'm going to click this little plus sign to bring down the animatable properties and I'm going to go down to evolution right here. I'll set a keyframe. I can do so with right click, insert keyframe, or the shortcut is F6. Then I'll go to the end frame and I'll hit F6 again to set another keyframe. Now I'll change the value from 0 to a 1. And instantaneously you see that there has been some change in the camera view. I can click through the history and you can see that there's evolution happening in my stars. Alright, now let's switch our display back here. And in order to see this in motion, we actually have to render it out. We can use this render and play button, which will calculate our frames. And then we'll see the result in Toon Boom's play application, which is going to load off off screen. Okay, the render has been done. Now it's loading up in my play window off screen. I'll just drag this back in here. And if we loop that and play it, you can see that there's evolution in the stars, which is making it twinkle. So effectively, we've used the turbulence noise to dictate where things will show and things won't show. Let's go back to our node view here, and we're going to try something else. I'm actually going to disable this image of the stars, and we're just going to take a look at the background and this texture. What I could also do, instead of using a cutter node, I can use what's called a refract node. The refract node will basically distort an image based on what mat it's given. So I'll simply grab the exact same shape and plug it in here, and in my refract module, layer properties, I'll actually say we'll do a 20 of intensity and a 16 in height, just to really push it out there so you can see how it reacts. So I'm using the exact same turbulence noise, but instead I'm distorting an image using this mat. Now we're going to render these frames once more, and we'll see what the results are in Toon Boom's play application shortly. Now that it's finished rendering, my preview is loading off screen. And I'll dress, drag this back in. And if I play this back in loop, you can see that using the exact same turbulence, we can sort of create something kind of like a water refraction to create um, different elements and different reactions out of what you have to play with. So if you have a water scene, you could use different types of turbulence noise to cause that, or you can even use different shapes. So there's several ways you can use a turbulence noise, and here are two of them right there.